Hi and welcome to my channel. Today I wanted to uh, make a video about all the funds that I have at the moment. For some it's a case of filming them before they die. Uh, for some it's more to uh, record their progress and it's not always clear which is which. So the first fun I want to talk about, I have no idea on this. Uh, it's a pain in the ass that uh, the garden centers only label the ferns fern or even foliage. This is uh, not a, a fern that I usually find, usually find at my lo local garden center or a plant shop so and I'm always looking for something new and exciting something I haven't seen before so I had to buy this <laughs> and I, I like phones but I I've, I still have a way to go when it comes to making them su survive and thrive so um, this fun is a bit unusual in that its leaves uh, are really stiff and uh, yeah I'm, I'm not they're kind of like plastic um, and they even get uh, spores on the underside often with uh, houseplant ferns, you never see spores before because they're not really happy or they are some kind of infertile hybrids. But uh, this one has lots of sp spores on the underside. Uh, this one has had a little uh, uh, too little light for a period, so uh, it's stretching. This is not its usual growth pattern. Let me show you one of the older leaves. This and, um, yeah. This, the, the end seemed to be a, uh, one big leaf with splits in. Uh, they're also really pointy. I. The reason for doing this so detailed is that I hope someone can tell me the species of this. Uh, it seems to be thriving, uh, so it must be an easy fun to keep. Uh, it is really thirsty. Let's see if we can go. I have it in this self-watering kind of pot, kind of DIY uh, thing. Um, it has lots of new leaves coming in and but I do feel that uh, reservoir in the pot quite often it's a weak system and uh, so sometimes often really I fill it daily or by every second day um, so really thirsty and the soil is uh, one of the problems with when you buy ferns is that they're often planted in really peat heavy or water retentive mixes or mix is probably an um, exaggeration but um yeah uh, and i tend to water my plants uh, a bit too much so when plants come in that kind of mix, even if it's a fern and they like moisture, then it happens that I, I rot them. Um, but this one doesn't seem to rot easily. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a tough one. I like it. And then my, this is my uh, crocodile fern. My mm, Microsorium. Musifolium. Uh, it's I haven't had it uh, for a long time, but it's been declining and quite fast. Um, I do think it's 
possible to save this. Um, one of the reasons for the problems was it was standing right in the direction of my uh, my humidifier, so it got a lot of uh, cold mist and it didn't like it. The, it got um, like this, it looks like some kind of fungus maybe or, well, cold mist. Not a success. Uh, so now I'm trying to keep it outside of the plant cage. You can see the plant cage in there with the humidifier. Uh, so now it has it uh, will have to deal with less humidity and um, but also less dry no, less mm, cold mist on its leaves so but as I said I think it's hope because new leaves are coming in and yeah I'm probably going to repot this quite soon because like I said it's a very heavy mix that uh, can contain a lot of water and I water a bit too frequently so and I think this could rot. I'm also trying out as the self watering wick system uh, with more of my ferns but I don't think that's compatible with uh, the heavy peat mix so um due for repot and if i can find a way to uh, set it up in a wick system i will uh, i often put things together different plants together if i think they like the same environment so and especially the the degree of watering so here i have this fern potted with a, um it's a wonderful plant but it's taking over so this is another and um, that's due for repot and this fern is doing better than it did uh, some time ago the best leaves here are uh, new ones so that's good. So I think this might be the kangaroo paw farm. I'm not sure. Uh, when I bought it, it only had this, these long uh, leaves without any f fingers on them or what you call them. Um, but uh, as the plant matures, it seems to develop this. And I think it looks like the kangaroo puffin. I'm not sure. So again, uh, please uh, help me ID this. This, I think, is the fern I've had the longest. At least a year. I don't remember anymore where I got it or exactly when. There could also be more than one species of fern in here. They don't look like they're all the same. But that could also be, it could also be that um, there's a ju juvenile form and a mature, f more mature form. So I'm not sure. Uh, this discoloration on die off, I think, has to do with too bright light a while ago. Uh, but it could also be the cold mist from my humidifier. I'm not sure. But it's not supposed to look like that. <clears throat> but new leaves seems to be doing good. So that's really promising and as I said this has uh, survived a long time in my care for a firm so it's seems to 
be able to handle a lot uh, and there are new leaves coming in if you can see like there's one and there's another one so uh, if you could ID this I would mm, appreciate that as well um, no there's no um, spores on this yet as I've seen at least and this one leaf I think is uh, really um, uh, it's stretched to reach the light so <laughs> some too strong light too little light and maybe now I've found a good place in between so let's hope the best this is my heart leaf fern and um, it's been standing in I kept it in my hydroponics as it is and I'm not sure if it's been very successful um, if you can see down here there's some um, these are not doing good it's dead 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 um, so I can't see any new fronts coming in maybe that's one yes that's one and that's of course that's one and that seems to be doing good also there there's this uh, strange uh, behavior with growing something in the middle of the leaf uh, I'm not really sure what that's about but I think they're supposed to grow like that uh, so that's interesting um yeah there are some new healthy leaves here and i really like this fern so i hope i can manage to keep it alive and make it thrive but i don't think my hydroponic setup was right for it at least n not without the report because it's the, the soil is really soggy this is my maiden hair fern. It's uh, one of uh, my latest acquisitions and it's not doing great. Let me just tell you that. Um, it seems like new fronts are drying out before they even unfurl. And I'm not sure why. I made it. I made a self-watering wick system pot for it, but so it it's not lack of moisture in the soil. Again, quite soggy soil. This is another one I hope to say save, save with uh, repotting. This is uh, my um, blue star fern or Phlebodium aureum. Also. Uh, quite new acquisition but this one is doing a lot better than some and as you can see the rhizomes here look healthy this also needs a repot but that's because um, uh, it's starting to um, it, it's filled the, the pot it's a very small pot so I'm going probably going to uh, plant some of these ferns together but I'll be a little careful about which ones go together because I don't want to plant one that is struggling and uh, or grow very slow together with one that is thriving and growing quickly because 
then the faster one can out outgrow the outcompete the other. So I need to think about that a little. Um, my blue stuff on it's. I think it's it looks great. Um, uh, the new leaves are coming in quite small. Um, I I don't really know why. It could be lack of nutrients. I'm very careful about fertilizing my ferns because they burn easily the roots. So um, it could also be, be because the the soil is too wet. This is uh, quite common in the house house plant market. It's uh, but I've. I think I uh, found a name for it, but I've forgotten it again. So yeah, mm. also quite stiff leaves, uh, quite tough. Uh, feels a bit, a little bit like plastic. So uh, this was separated a while ago. I put one part into a terrarium, uh, and it died. Uh, that is the good thing about uh, dividing plants and putting them in different environments. Environments. Uh, I often use do that, and uh, even though I end up killing a part of it, then I have another part of it still living, like this one. And this part is doing good. Uh, it's growing pretty fast, so but I don't think it fills the pots really. And I may pot it together with another fast grower. So, um, if you know the name of this farm, please let me know. This is another that, that I would like to know the name of. The leaves are kind of, they have some, an interesting shape to them. And this one is doing good. It's the first one I put in the self-watering pot, I think. Uh, it has new fronds growing, like this one. So, uh, but somehow dried out. Um, yeah, um, again, I would like to repot this one because it is um, uh, bec because the soil gets too soggy. I think it looks kind of the more classic fun like, and uh, I think some of this fronts drying out. It has to do with dry air, so I need to figure out some way to put it close to my humidifier, maybe. We'll see. This was originally my Norwegian species terrarium, but uh, it has had some additions. It's the only Norwegian species in its family and this is doing really well with several new fronts uh, it shows signs of too little light so in the future I want to give it more light and then we have Sisselgut uh, this is a very common more common Norwegian fern this one's not so that common uh, this is a very common one, um, and it grows really well in here, uh, so much so that I probably need to at least take out the part of it and plant it somewhere else. Over here is, um, it looks a little like something you would, you can buy as a host plant, but this one is collected from the wild in Norway. 
and it's it is a different species uh, when it's not thriving uh, the small leaves fall off so you end up with a lot of just dead stalks like this um, not extremely successful in here but it's alive and this is an experiment because uh, when you're collecting in the wild you can't really tell if the plants will survive in normal room temperature uh, this is a very a closed terrarium with no air no uh, air ho holes for air to, but I do lift the lid at least once a day and then I have some sphagnum moss Norwegian sphagnum moss in here it does show signs of grow, uh, drying out on the, the top layer but that is quite normal and also happens in nature so I recently just tucked it down because it was uh, getting leggy stretching for light and then drying out even faster so so I think that was all the original inhabitants in this then I added uh, a pot of my uh, Selaginella apoda that I bought in a pot we'll see it later it's not really a fern uh, but it's a close relative to ferns or close but uh, a relative it's called club moss or spike moss or something but Selaginella is the family name so uh, I really like it and this was kind of an insurance if the main plant didn't make it but the main plant also looks good and I, I even have part of it growing in my hydroponic setup so my worries were was completely unnecessary then I also transplanted some ferns that I grew from spores. I think these might be tree ferns, <laughs> so this will be interesting in this small box. They also think uh, the lighting is too bad. Uh, they stretch a lot. Uh, you can see another hair. Um, I don't have completely control about what spores actually made it to this stage I put a lot of spores in a box I can show you right away this is the box where, where I put the spores originally now I think there's been some mold in here and stuff but um, it did take a long time before they got to this and as I said I'm not sure any longer what they are supposed to be um, I know there were some tree ferns in here and also some selaginella uh, but this does not look like selaginella I think no. I don't know I really don't know. Um, I was really desperate to get some Selaginellas because they were, they were not sold in Norway. Uh, I was very happy to get the Selaginella Apoda uh, this year, but when I put the spores in here, I didn't know, think I would be able to get any Selaginella anytime soon so I was kind of desperate so whatever this is <laughs> it's interesting to see them grow from uh, from spores although it takes a long time and if these are supposed to be tree ferns then <laughs> even longer time this is my Selaginella apoda 
it has grown a lot since I got it. It's also very easy to transplant uh, and separate. It's just you take it clump and put it in another pot or something. Wherever you want it to grow with uh, some humidity or at least moisture in the soil. I would prefer uh, a more showy selaginella. Some of them have really uh, um, blue metallic sheen to them and um, yeah um, this has really small fronts and it does this looks like a moss other types of selaginella are more they look more like ferns uh, I also think it's very interesting to keep a plant that has that's so um, primitive or like it has survived on earth for so long so uh, yeah I love selaginellas I think and, and the, this one is really easy to grow um, it was the only one I could get my hands on here in Norway so the last fern I have is inside the terrarium um it's a bird's nest fern the ripley kind and i think it may be dying um i'm not sure about those new fronts growing the problem with growing it in the terrarium uh, at least this one is that it get when it gets water in the crown then uh, yeah, it's it often rots so the next time I buy the species I will not put it in at least not in this terrarium at least so and I hope but I do hope this survives it has been it has survived for quite a long time actually now so I still keep my fingers crossed so that was my funds I'm not comfortable with saying it's a fun collection because they die too often. Um, but I'm slowly getting a hang of it. I hope to do more videos like this, like uh, take a plant fa family or type of plant and talk about them. Um, please let me know if what you think about that is that something you'd like to see more thanks for watching and i hope to see you next time bye